watching News Talk with Julia Cosby at International News Channel. India's Citizenship Amendment Act, known as CAA, is still the talk of the town in our part of the world. Recently, Chicago City Council voted against the resolution critical of CAA. Many members of the council felt uncomfortable in voting in favor of the resolution because we don't know the ins and outs of what's going on there and the grounds of India. I have to say no because I don't have enough information to say yes to go against somebody that I trust. The resolution was rejected by a 26 to 18 vote. Your Honor, there are 18 yeas and 26 nays. <clears throat> The resolution um, fails. Lightfoot said it is for the federal Biden administration to make the comments or to pass judgment on such issues, not for the local city governments. Chicago-based eminent Indian American Dr. Bharat Bari welcomed the decision of Chicago City Council. Um, but think of this. Think of if we take this on, why not take on the Chinese Uyghur uh, ethnic, ethnic cleansing conflict? debate. Why not uh, deal with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Uh, how about uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria and the exploitation of women and the raping of women and pillaging of villages? And we go on and on because there's many, many issues that I think are important. Uh, we are a global city. I consider us a global city. But we have many pressing issues here at home that need our attention. Um, and I love to debate these issues. I love the area of international affairs. Uh, I studied it. And, and I love it, but I think, um, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, this is a place that I think uh, we could hear a resolution and, and be pro or against it, uh, but not divisive. Uh, I would be remiss if I don't recognize the fact that we've done many resolutions in this, in this, in this uh, council. Uh, apartheid is different than this. I, I don't equate those two, I really don't. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, that's why I can't support it. I think we ought to be uh, uniting our communities and, and getting them together to talk about their own conflicts. And, and um... In 2019, the parliament in India took on an important task of amending the Citizenship Act of India of 1955. This law does not take away anyone's citizenship who is already a citizen of India, as the some vested interest politically motivated groups will have you believe. I am joined with a few Indian Americans who would like to know their take on this issue. First, I'd like to invite Amita Mittal. He is the General Secretary of World Hindu Council of America. Chicago is a sanctuary city. This line was used by supporters of the resolution. How would you reply to this? Um, Chicago is a century city. I hear that a lot. There are many cities popping up and calling them some century cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's a recent phenomenon in the last four, three, four years. Um, India is a century country for thousands of years. You go in the history of India mm -hmm. uh, or a Hindu India has been a century country for so many years, so many people. Uh, before this concept of century city popped up in somebody's brain, um, like I said, they know. So um, good. Welcome, America. You're finally waking up and, um, you know, uh, calling uh, cities, calling themselves century cities. What's your message to other cities in the USA where similar resolutions might have been pushed with this issue? Uh, my message to the other cities where this resolution, similar to the one that was proposed in Chicago, um, we had an opportunity in Chicago to educate and um, uh, give the reality of this um, resolution, what it actually has in, in it. It has, it's a hate-filled, uh, divisive resolution, which uh, singles out India as um, uh, a place where human rights are violated, like India is the only country in the world where human rights are violated, and uh, it picks on uh, and divides people on the basis of religion. While the job of these uh, cities where it passed, the leadership should be uniting people, bringing them on the same platform and trying to resolve issue instead of creating issues. Um, the other cities where it passed had a smaller um, city council, members ranging from 11 to as small as six. Uh, they read the first line of these resolutions, which reads to congratulate India 
and they think they're congratulating India. They don't go into the details of it, what it's actually doing. And in Chicago, we had an opportunity because it's a larger um, council, 50 member council, um, mm -hmm. and has procedures where such resolutions um, um, get tabled at least 48 hours prior to the meeting, whereas in the other cities, the resolution um, has no um, time limit. They were just proposed and they passed because, like I said, there's a smaller uh, council who doesn't get a time to actually read into what the resolution actually says and does. In your opinion, uh, what do you think the push for this res resolution will actually do for these cities? Uh, the push for this resolution is coming from, um, you know, Council for Islamic Relations in America, which I think uh, should work on, focus on the the, uh, the American Islamic relations and harmony while there are so many, uh, you know, uh, misinformation going about the, the religion and try to come take that that as their topic that is that is their core of their um, mandate is according to themselves in their charter but they're picking up this um, at the behest of people who are uh, trying to create political unrest in India uh, they're not happy with the Narendra Modi government for the last six years and uh, by passing these resolutions, they don't have a greater impact in the United States, as many would point out. Um, what this does is it gives um, a message to population in India, hey, look, uh, India is an oppressive country under the leadership of Narendra Modi. America is laughing at you, which is this whole thing is made up to create that narrative in India and um, a narrative in the United States of how terrible uh, the people of India are. And these boats are... Um, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, something that is not good for the humanity. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm joined with Sachin Thipanti, who is a software engineer based out of Chicago. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what led you to oppose this resolution? Uh, I think the main thing is min misinformation. So this resolution was based on a lot of misinformation. And it was creating a kind of a polarization between the societies. Any kind of misinformation could lead to any kind of hate crimes, right? That's what is happening in the world. So that was triggering my mind. And I thought this is not, this is not be like in the city. We should not be like dealing with such, such kind of hate resolutions in Chicago city. Why do you think this resolution is so important for Indian Americans and how is it uh, diversive? Actually, one important thing, like South, uh, South Asian community lives in Chicago or uh, in America for many years. There might be conflicts, there might be differences of opinions uh, because of their own South Asian conflicts and everything. But we don't bring those uh, conflicts in the city. Here we live with peace and harmony. So I think uh, it was not good for South Asian community as a whole. So that is one of the things I would like to say. That's why it just divides you. Well, since it's been defeated, what does this mean for Indian Americans? It means a lot in my understanding. I think if Indian Americans speak up and if they, con they have uh, good contacts in society or in local officials, I think any kind of hate campaign, any kind of uh, a resolution like these which creates a divide between the society it could be stopped so this is a big message to all the indian americans living in america what have they wanted to achieve by this resolution uh i think the narrative because one fringe group wants to create a divide between the society and that's their win because uh once they create a divide then they can capitalize on it they can do more such kind of stuff, they can push their narrative amongst the society. So I think that's what they wanted to achieve, in my understanding. There was, there was nothing positive they're going to achieve. It is just about the fake narrative. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We're joined with another fellow from Chicago. His name is Kieran, and he is a network and security engineer. Thank you for joining us today. How uh, crucial is it to build up relationships with local government bodies, and how can these resolutions be put on hold? 
Uh, I would say it's very crucial to build good relationship with your local council members because uh, uh, in order for you uh, to put your perspective in front of them, in order for you to put the facts uh, and provide them statistics and details to them, uh, it's very important because uh, the elder men and elder women and the council members are very busy in their day-to-day -day lives and activities which they conduct and uh, uh, it's not easy to get in touch with them. So if you build a good uh, bonding and good relationship with them, it becomes uh, a, a little easier for you to put your uh, points and also the facts. And uh, they're very humble and polite people. And uh, it's also good to be connected to the community and local issues. So how would you stop such a resolution in the future? Uh, I would say educate your council members, uh, uh, keep them posted what's happening in India, provide them facts, provide them uh, details, and you can connect to them with certain organizations who are doing a very good job and uh, who disseminate information in an unbiased manner. Uh, that's one of the very good ways to stop future resolutions, which is not factual like this. But. What should uh, Indian Americans do in regards to stopping American politicians in Indian eternal matters? Uh, Indian Americans, yeah, definitely uh, can uh, communicate uh, with the local government bodies and uh, they should uh, often uh, communicate with each other and come together work as a peaceful, I mean, we are a peaceful society, we are living in a peaceful society and Indian American communities are believe in harmony and spreading love and not, uh, we don't want any divide in the, uh, in the local, uh, in the local societies. And uh, so I would say, uh, talk to your local bodies and uh, keep in touch with them and provide them details. Uh, that will help us uh, stop such resolutions or bring such resolutions uh, going forward. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm joined here with Shishit Shetty, who is a mechanical engineer based out of Chicago. What is the most revealing experience in this advent to defeat the resolution? Well, we uh, had a lot of insightful moments in this whole fiasco. A lot of unexpected things happened. Just to name a few, we had one of these journalists from Al Jazeera call in with a proxy name during one of the city council meetings and lie about things that are happening in India. We knew that this particular journalist was working closely with the sponsor of the resolution and we had earlier interacted with him. So it was pretty revealing to see that he used a proxy name at a city council meeting. Uh, not just that, we even complained about this whole situation with the sergeant and he was then disallowed to speak at the city council meeting. Uh, in another uh, instance, we had a lot of callers call in from the other side and speak the exact same script, uh, which we were not very surprised because now it was not just misrepresentation, it was also bad homework on their part. We investigated into the 24 organizations that uh, the sponsor claimed was supporting this resolution and we realized that most of these organizations were either defunct or not based in Chicago or just mere Facebook pages. Uh, so that was, again, very conniving on their side. They were uh, also claiming that they had endorsements from some businesses, which when we investigated found that these businesses never really endorsed this particular resolution. So yeah, pretty eye-opening. How did you conduct these investigations? So, well, we reached out to these organizations. So for example, uh, the businesses that they claimed were endorsing them, we reached out to them, we spoke to them. Uh, we were of the uh, point of view that we would like to these businesses and clarify that this resolution is misleading and is polarizing and it's something that we should not pursue. And uh, while we were conversing uh, with these businesses, we realized that these businesses never really endorsed this particular resolution. Why do you think why do you think the resolution was so self-contradictory coming from Chicago City Council? Well, uh, the Chicago City Council is a huge supporter of uh, immigrants, persecuted minorities. Uh, people and the representatives in this particular City Council root for uh, people coming through the south border in this particular country. However, they do not like it when uh, the Indian government does it. 
so they are not very appreciative of the citizenship amendment act which allows persecuted minorities uh, to get citizenship in an expedited manner now these minorities came to india before 31st december 2014 obviously uh, on the other hand uh, the abrogation of article 370 and 35a which now lets federal laws seep into uh, the union territory of jammu and kashmir gives rights to lgbt community gives rights to women which the city council is opposing so it's pretty confusing to me uh, and i don't understand what the city council in a progressive city like chicago oppose something like this they oppose the rioters of capitol hill and in the same breath they uh, sort of support the rioters at red fort so it's pretty political in that sense uh, were, do you believe that there are any lessons learned obviously we should definitely establish good communication with the representatives and the officers and the aldermen in the city council right away it's never too late i say so because uh, these resolutions are sort of covertly passed and you would never know that such a resolution has propped up in your city unless you know representatives in your respective city councils also uh, there will be a lot of false equivalences done they will say that there are things like apartheid happening in your country which uh, even in chicago some of the aldermen had strong opposition to uh, using words like that uh, so you should know and you should read well about the issues that are happening in india and the undertone is very specifically very hindu phobic in nature the hate is not against hateful things that might be happening across the world rather it is a hate against the mandate of people of india it is the hate against the government of india and hate against narendra modi so that's the undertone well thank you so much for joining us now to conclude we're joined with richa who is a writer and human rights activist based out of colorado thank you for joining us richa uh how relevant do you see such resolutions tabled in american city council taking talking about india's internal matters So I think you've asked a very pertinent question. I think this has been flummoxing us and you know like frustrating us as to how relevant are these resolutions that are scolding India for actually you know a really good human rights laws and like a CAA is a human rights law you know it helps refugees come in then there's the farmers um of uh, you know bill which which again is uh, approved by the Biden administration as a good uh, step in the right direction it has been approved and appreciated by the WTO so uh, you know some of the points that were raised in these resolutions first of all were not right but what is the point even lori lightfoot who is the mayor of the city of chicago eventually said that you know she has no authority really to talk about these issues when a press reporter asked her and tried to pin her into saying you know why did this resolution fail so she said you know she would want to defer to the biden administration because it's it's a matter of another country 8000 miles away and they really do not know what is the ground reality so to your question i really think that you know it's happening across the united states that certain city councils unknowingly are indulging in this you know thinking their constituents are asking for it but there is no room for this kind of resolutions to come uh, come on board you know chicago in fact i heard in 150 years there's never been such a re- resolution tabled um in chicago so uh, which which scolds a country or you know tries to tell a country what exactly to do because it's a city council it it works for the 3 million people who live there so really i think to say in one word the answer is no <laughs> yeah i i think with uh, what you're mentioning with lori uh, the mayor and a lot of some of the quotes from the city councilors they're talking about uh, like china and other countries like how is this really relevant to our municipalities right so it's it's not um Since the resolution got defeated, what's your message to other cities in the USA where similar resolutions might be pushed? 
Yes, so this has been a huge step in the right direction and much, much congratulations to the Chicago Indian American team that was really working on this. They were simply volunteers. They were the David fighting the Goliath, you know, because we were working against a big machinery that has, um, you know, really tried to push this resolution across eight different city councils and because of the COVID situation and because of the second fact that the Indian Americans are largely focused on their work and home and careers, they really, um, you know, have not participated as much in the political um, arena. So it was very easy for these people to sneak in that resolution, given that COVID and given the fact that we are hardly present in the city council or, or in the political engagement uh, arena. So um, eight, seven or eight city councils have passed this resolution and Chicago, because it's had this civic engagement for a long time, they were able to really come together as volunteers and fight this ma big machinery and much kudos to them. And the big message I have for everybody is that you know, you, we as Indian Americans can no longer ignore this, you know. We have no way that we can ignore uh, this civic engagement, political engagement. The important thing is for everyone to go and meet up with their councillors. This has happened in certain city councils uh, and certain, you know, counties where people are talking to their representatives and saying, you know, if anything like this is, you know, brought to you, please, engage with us because it does not represent the complete voice of the Indian American constituency in your area. So uh, that has helped in certain areas where people, you know, the, the counselors are alerted in advance and we need to do that across the country. That is what I think. Do you have any conclusive remarks? You know, I have worked with other organizations and what I have found is that these have replica repercussions on even our next generation. So, you know, a lot of Indian Americans are like, you know, we are not the political minded people and things like that, you know. But what's happening is this goes into the media, you know, it becomes part of uh, history at the resolution if it's passed. And then when students in the uh, colleges and even middle schools, I have seen this, um, you know, they are being asked to write essays on India and how, you know, uh, these resolutions are discussed in school. Right. So that is even more insidious because our children are going to be brainwashed into thinking um, in, in the wrong direction about India. And it's also sort of a systemic bullying. Right. Because, you know, these children, you know, they, they have a strong affinity to India through their parents, through their grandparents and whatnot. So that, I think, is my, one of the most important points I wanted to make, you know, that um, th they really have to start engaging. And the second point I want to make is that, you know, uh, this machinery is actually uh, not working is in an isolated manner. Like, it's not like Chicago. When I spoke to an alder in Chicago, and I don't want to name names, but he said to me, he was sort of convinced that, you know, uh, when I presented to him all of the laws that they were bringing up and the issues they were bringing up in the resolution, he said, I can understand this, but go talk to uh, Shama Savant in Seattle. And I was like, Seattle City Councilor, what does she have to do with uh, Chicago, a resolution in Chicago? So the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, this is not an isolated, uh, you know, team working in Chicago. It's a big machinery that's trying to work against the Indian Americans. And this there have already been hate crimes uh, happening in Seattle. We've seen something in Canada. We've seen something in California, you know. So we, we really need to be alert as Indian Americans to make sure that, um, you know, we don't let this sort of uh, juggernaut continue to attack uh, us because India, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter to India. You know, it's it's a non-binding resolution. But for Indian Americans living here, it's impacting us across generations. Well, thank you very much for sharing your opinions and your views. Thank you for watching today's special news talk edition with Julia Cosby at the International News Channel. <laughs>